Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, April 6th. It's 8.15 a.m. This is your Feel Good Stretch installment. We're going to start in a diamond pose today where the bottoms of the feet are together and comfortably uh, distant, comfortably distance from the inner thighs. You can place your hands on the tops of your shins, wiggling some space in your spine. And when you feel comfortable, then you can face your palms up. Please close your eyes and give yourself a chance to land in this moment. Noticing your surroundings. Noticing the surface of your skin. And then noticing your breath. Start to expand in the breath awareness, inhaling with a little bit of emphasis, feeling the lungs and the chest expand, holding for a moment before exhaling. If you're familiar with Ujjayi breathing, you can bring on that whispering sound. You can continue breathing like this if the next breathing technique doesn't work for you. We'll move into solar breathing or Surya Vedana. It's a variation of alternating nostrils, except you only inhale through the right and you only exhale through the left. So that for these cold, heavy, rainy days, the kind of breakthrough, you know, like it can be a ray of sun. <laughs> so you're gonna take your ring finger and close the left nostril. Then inhale strongly through the right nostril. And it's not a sniff, it's strong, but it's like landing low in your body. Hold, close right, exhale left. Continue, inhale right. Close right, exhale left. We'll practice this for two minutes. Strong Ujjayi solar breaths. You feel the breath moving up into your head, all around your body, just like the light from the sun would illuminate everything that it touches.
Okay. You can lower your hands after you exhale. You start to circle your shoulders. Just notice how that breath may have affected your energy, especially if you can do that for like seven minutes at least is really when you start to notice the effects. So I have to say for me, in a, in a couple minutes of doing that, I always feel more lightened, more energized when that nadi or that channel is awoken through Surya Vedana. You can clasp your fingers together and lift your arms up overhead. I'm just gonna pump your arms up and down like this. Feel some movement coming in from the rib cage as well. So in the springtime, everywhere from basically above the nipples is what tends to get closed off. So you can start to circle now. The lymph channels, the lungs, the sinuses, the stomach. Reverse the circle. Good. Then you can lower both hands down and out to the sides. Sweep the left or the right arm up. Big breath in. Lower that down and other side. And continue going from side to side. Nice strong inhales. Just loosening everything up in the upper body. One more to each side. Good. And then you can point your knees up, feet flat on the floor, and your hands behind you. A straight down through the arms, the chest is lifting. You can lift your toes up, lift your hips up for a moment. Doesn't have to be super high and lower down. We'll do that about five times, getting a little stretch for your wrists. You can always skip this if it doesn't work for your wrists. Good. And the next time your hips are down, uh, you can walk your hands a little bit wider, a little bit further back, make your feet wider, and bring both knees to the right. Windshield wipers are going to feel kind of crooked here. Now pick up your left arm. Big breath in, reach to the sky, and tap the left elbow to the floor across your right leg. Then stretch the arm up like a rainbow, lean back through the chest, windshield wiper your knees to the left and tap the right elbow. Continue. Really squeezing from that midsection area, compressing the abdominal organs. One more to each side, please. And the next time you're vertical, stretch both of your legs out in front of you and point and flex your feet strongly back and forth. and circle your ankles around in the same direction. You're gonna feel your body kind of wiggling with the rest of the movement. 
reverse. Then you can scoot your hips forward and flip over onto your belly. If you have two blocks, please have them nearby so we can do a cactus arm position. So your elbows are propped up on the blocks, either on their medium or highest height, depending on how much of a stretch you wanna feel. You can turn your head to one side. Feel the compression of your belly against the floor. You can always make the blocks higher as needed. Keep your breath nice and strong. You can turn your head to the other side. Then you can lift your chest while your arms are on the uh, blocks here. You have a little bit of support in the back bend. Press your hips down, open up the lungs, big breath in. And then exhale, you can remove your blocks. Slide your hands by the sides of your chest. You can put your forehead on the mat and you're gonna kind of wing your shoulders up and down, alternating. and then into some circles. The shoulders move into circles here. All this kind of pumping, flushing movement is really good for the circulation and the lymphatic system. You can lift up to your hands and your knees. And from, you can always be on your elbows here if you can't be on your wrists. We're gonna take some pumping movements through the uh, stomach. So it's, it looks like cat cow, except it's more sharp and it's like pumping. <laughs> Compressing that midsection and then releasing it. You'll notice that in this pumping variation, the head doesn't lift super high any, at any point. And you're gonna circle your hips around. Nice big circles. You can always start small and gradually get bigger. And reverse the circle. Starting small, gradually getting bigger. Feel how your wrists are also circling here. The arms are circling in the wrist joint. And then from neutral, you can bring your knees together. All 10 of the toes. Well, let's just do a traditional child's pose first. Flat in the feet. Fold over your legs. You could stack your elbows or your forearms under your forehead. 
thumb breaths there, compressing the belly into the thighs, expanding your back. Then you can shift forward, curl the toes under, and we'll move into a toe stretch now. Just be very gentle here as you start to lean back, especially if you have arthritis, just be careful. Depending on where you're at, you might be able to actually sit on top of your heels. If not, put your fingers on the floor or on blocks. Then you can flip over your feet and we'll go into a kneeling squat position, which looks like this. The heels are lifted. you're kind of curled into a ball. Then you're gonna push your legs down into a forward fold. Ooh, keep your knees as bent as you need to. Feel free to pedal out through the knees. You can put hands on blocks here. Feel stiff today. You can clasp your fingers behind your head, or sorry, behind your back, lift your arms up overhead. Slowly rise up, one vertebra at a time. So we're in a standing position. The arms can lift up, breathing in. And exhale, pump your elbows down by your ribs. Inhale, stretch your arms up. We'll do that a few times. Keep your chest expanded as the arms move around it. Just breathe as needed. If you know Pastrika Pranayama, you could do it. Very good. Lower the arms. Standing nice and easy. Noticing anything shifting around. Perhaps you're already feeling a little bit lighter. Okay, please circle your wrists while you're standing here. Just make a fist and circle. And reverse. Very good. Then you're gonna tap your, you're gonna bend your elbows and tap your fingers to your shoulders. Looks like a bicep curl. Tap. Then you're going to flip your palms away from your shoulders and lower. Bend, flip, and lower. So the palm rotation will be alternating. This is great for the elbow joints. You might actually hear your elbow pop or adjust. One more. Then you can bring your fingertips to your shoulders and move your arms into big circles. And reverse. Good, shake that out. Now you're gonna bend your knees a little bit. 
You can put your hands right on the top of your knees and you're gonna circle your knees within your uh, shin bones and your ankles. Just like this. Keep it sharp and smooth. Reverse it. Good. Then you're going to fold forward over your legs and walk it into your first downward facing dog. You can always have your knees on the floor here, modifying with child's pose. About 10 breaths. Lower down the knees, and then we'll step the right foot forward. Please take your fingers to the blocks if you have them on their highest height. You can bend forward into your front leg, opening the back hip. Then you can lean back, straightening the front leg. Continue feeling it out, loosening everything up. The next time that your leg is bent, plant your left hand down on the floor or the block on its lowest level. Turn your chest to the right and lift your right arm up into a twist on the inhale. When you exhale, touch the right hand down to the floor again. And we'll do that move a few times. So you open on the inhale and you close on the exhale. Move from your center and bring into it that sort of pumping energy. Deliver. One more time. You can lower it down and switch your legs. So now the left foot is going forward. You can get your hands to your blocks as needed. Bending forward, sending your hips down, lifting the chest, and leaning the hips back, straightening into the front leg. So this is, again, this repetitive movement. It's almost like pumping in the knee joint here. Be mindful. The next time your leg is bent, you can Plant down the right hand on the floor or the block. Twist the left arm up on the inhale. Exhale, close it off. Inhale, open from the belly region, from the center. Exhale, close. Continue.
two more. And when you complete, you can step the left leg back. And we'll move into downward facing dog second time. Ten slow full breaths. Lower the knees down. We're moving into pigeon pose now. If you can't do pigeon pose in the forward position, please flip onto your back for seated uh, for supine figure four. Otherwise, reach your right leg back so you have room to kick your left foot forward. Your left knee will be a little bit wider than the hip. You can start to walk the right leg back, walk the arms forward. If you need support, you can always put a little block or a blanket under the left hip. We'll hold here, really let your hips sink down. If you have a block nearby for your head, you can rest your head on it. Hold for a little bit longer. You can sit up tall and sink onto your left hip. Swing your right leg forward. So you're now in a head to knee position, left heel against the right inner thigh. You have a blanket. You can sit up on the edge of the blanket. If you have any stuff with your back, what you can do is bend your right knee upwards. You start to fold forward the head going towards the knee. Right leg is straight, left knee is out like it would be for a tree post. You're folding over the right leg. Relax your head. You can feel really nice to bend the knee up enough that you can rest your head on the knee. There's different options. Slowly, slowly, you can rise up. We'll head to pigeon pose on the other side. You can take figure four on your back as needed. 
If you're in pigeon pose, the right leg is now forward. Please use your props as needed. They're there to support you. Nice long hold, let your body sink down. Walk your hands back. Please take your time as you sink onto your right hip and swivel your left leg forward. Option to bend the left knee up as needed. So it's head to knee pose. Sitting on the edge of a blanket will help you get more of a bend from the hips. Fold forward. Rise up. Send both of your legs straight out in front of you, hands behind you. Lift up nice and tall, hold here in staff pose, just as a counter pose. Keep your shoulders and your ears lengthening away from each other. And you can scoot your hips forward, fly on your back, and bring your right knee into your chest. You can straighten your left leg forward. Keeping the weight of the leg really heavy into your hip socket, you can circle the leg around.
you can put your hands around the thigh and stretch your heel up to the ceiling. And then switch your legs, please. Right leg forward, left knee into the chest. Giving it a good squeeze, feeling the weight of the leg ground into the hip joint before circling it around. Reversing the circle. Then you can hook your hands under the thigh, stretch your heel upwards and supine leg stretch. And you can slowly lower that leg down. Hug both knees in for happy baby. Open the legs wide. And then take your time. You can go to legs up the wall pose to complete practice today. The upside down moment in to continue assisting circulation.
closing your eyes with your hands on your belly and allowing yourself to enjoy these last few minutes of quiet. Noticing once again your surroundings, how you show up in your surroundings. Now, after you've completed your practice, you can place your hands over your heart as you reflect on one thing that you can take from your practice today. When you feel complete, you can slide your feet down the wall, slowly rolling over to your side and coming to an upright seated position. Bring your hands together. Your final moment of gratitude and acknowledgement. One step more connected as you move back into the surface, into the rest of your day. You can bow your head down. Thank you so much for practicing today, and I will see you next time. Namaste.